the Rosaceae, the rose family. Characteristics common to plants in this family, um, they are dicots, so they all have uh, netted uh, leaf veination patterns, and the flower parts are in fours or fives. These are usually trees or shrubs, but sometimes they're herbaceous with uh, little or no woody growth. They're usually in the temperate regions in the northern hemisphere. The leaves are often spiral on the stem, um, but they are usually alternate. And the margins are serrate, which means toothed. The leaf margins are toothed. Flowers are showy. They usually have five sepals and five petals. Think of a flower, a rosebud opening. Uh, it's still got those five little green things when it's a tiny bud, and then those uh, are the sepals. They peel open to relieve to produce the petals. This this group is um, characterized by a structure called a hypanthium, in which the sepals and the petals and the stamens are all fused into sort of a little bowl. Uh, it's not the only in the Rosaceae family, but all of the Rosaceae members do have that uh, feature. And naturally, these flowers are never blue or red. They're yellows and oranges and whites. Economically very important. Uh, they're apples, pears, roses, plums, are raspberries, blackberries, uh, are all strawberries are all in this family. And then also there are some decorative things like roses and crab apples and spirea, uh, things that uh, we use in our landscape quite often. Characteristics part two, here you can see a, a typical rose flower is like a strawberry. There's the serrated uh, leaf edges, the margins that are toothed. You can see the hypanthium structure uh, somewhat in that picture there but you can see it better in this picture. The, uh, the, the, the stamens come right down to end uh, and on this bowl to just sort of meld into it, and then the petals are all fused on, on to the sepals down at the bottom there. So in the picture of the yellow flower on the right, the hypanthium is not labeled correctly. It should be up at the base of the flower there, and then you can see it on the left on the prairie smoke a little bit better. And again, there's a typical rosaceous flower with five uh, petals sticking out and the stamens uh, protruding from the edges. Taxonomy of the rosaceae, they are uh, in the order rosales. There are some other um, uh, families in this, uh, fam in this order. Uh, this is the rosaceae. There are several subfamilies within the rosaceae. The taxonomy, the genetics are uh, fairly complicated. And uh, as you can imagine, there's uh, disagreement amongst the experts. There's about 95 genera and 2,800 species in this family. The location on the evolutionary tree, here we are up at the very tippy tippy top. It doesn't necessarily mean that these are the most evolved of uh, all the orders, but um, they're, uh, they're getting up there on the scale. Notable species. There are many economically valuable members, as I already mentioned. The rose, of course, is uh, enormous, both in landscaping and in floral um, usages. Plums, apricots, peaches, nectarines, cherries, and almonds are all in the prunus genus. And additionally, the um, attractive bark and flowers means they're, in addition to being used for fruit, they're used for ornamental uses. Rubus genus has all the brambles and blackberries and raspberries. Pear is in the pyrus genus. Apples and crabbles, uh, crab apples are in the malus genus. And in addition, there's many others. Um, quince, mountain ash, hawthorn, spireas, cantoniaster, potentilla, ninebark, strawberries. Aronia berries are being used uh, more and more commercially for um, production of uh, uh, juice for sweetening um, uh, beverages. People are, are wanting to go off of corn syrup, and so aronia, aronia berry juice is uh, kind of coming coming to the fore. I like this. Uh, there is a professor that had, uh, has an online uh, discussion of the Rosaceae from the University of Illinois. And uh, all of a sudden, there's all this commentary about the grass family, how important they are uh, to humans, and that it's the world's most important plant family in terms of humans. But then he winds up with, uh, but the Rosaceae make life worth living. And uh, indeed, when you look at all those fruits there, uh, it would be uh, uh, pretty sad day to if we lost uh, strawberries and raspberries and plums and nectarines and all those things from our diet. Some examples, uh, edible 
rosaceae. Um, the malus um, uh, can hardly not mention apples and crab apples. There are, uh, as is often the case of these things, and many, 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 many cultivars have now been uh, developed of all of them, of, of flowering crabs, of crab apples that are, uh, that are eaten, and of apples that are eaten. Uh, the fruit is called a pome. They produce a lot of pollen, but they are not wind pollinated. They are insect pollinated. And this is probably the most commonly cultivated fruit in the world. M many, many people, if you're going to have any kind of fruit tree at all um, in your yard, you're going to have an apple. And then um, just all the uses, uh, commercial uses for apple, uh, the, so um, commercial farming of the trees is, is enormous. Uh, pectin comes from apples, uh, people that make jam with all other types of fruits and vegetables. The extract that is used to thicken the jam uh, comes from apples. And then, of course, they're uh, used to make uh, cider, and uh, apple wood is used for a variety of things, uh, sometimes uh, actual uh, wooden structural things, but uh, often things that are smoked with apple wood has a really good flavor. Uh, the Prunus genus, uh, as far as edible, is um, another one that you just about can't go without uh, discussion because plums, cherries, peaches, apricots, almonds, and um, several other fruits are all uh, in prunus species. Uh, the plum is uh, kind of complicated. It's been used for so long that and hybridized so much that it's, um, you know, the typical plums that are used for um, cultivation, it's hard to know uh, what species they really originated from, uh, which crosses were used uh, for the original species. Uh, cherry is generally prunus avium. Uh, sometimes other species used for both fruit and wood and um, uh, horticulturally. Look at that uh, photograph there of a beautiful flowering cherry in Japan. Peaches and nectarines are actually the same uh, genus, the same species of Prunus persica. There just is a genetic fluke that has arisen more than once uh, where the peaches no longer um, produce that, that fuzz and uh, then that's called a nectarine. It's just a hairless peach. Apricots are widely grown uh, and have been uh, since prehistory. It's hard to uh, trace back when they first um, began uh, production, uh, commercial production for apricots. The um, uh, seeds are used uh, to flavor amaretto, not almonds. Most people think of that as an almond liqueur. And additionally, the seeds, uh, for a while there was a fad where uh, they were getting an extract called laetrile. Uh, out of apricots that were supposed to help with cancer. And um, nowadays, uh, it's considered, if anything, it makes cancer a little worse. So uh, not a good folk remedy. Almonds, um, another one uh, very, very widely grown for a very many, many, many years, even uh, a few found in King Tut's tomb. Wild almonds are toxic, but uh, people had found a, a non-toxic um, branch uh, years ago, and obviously those are what people are using. Uh, interestingly, nearly half of all the beehives in the United States are moved to California to aid pollination of the almond crop in California. I think I read it's about 70% of the world's almonds are now produced in the Central Valley of California, and they are 100% dependent on bees for pollination. And uh, the, so beekeepers um, and including those in Iowa, um, they, they load their hives up and truck them down to Texas for part of the winter and offer pollination services down there. And then they all head to California during um, the almond blooming period, which of course is not too long. And then they head home for uh, the summer in, uh, in areas that are cold in the winter. This, is, um, this helps the beekeepers in that they um, have a product then year-round that they can get income from. There are issues in that um, it's a great way to um, spread diseases all across the United States. So um, there are some, some drawbacks to that. The fruit is called a droop, uh, whereas apples are pomes. And uh, these are called stone fruits, additionally. The um, toxic element in almonds um, and other uh, members of uh, this genus are um, cyanogenic glucosides, which break down into cyanide. Obviously, not a, not a good thing. OK, horticultural examples of rosaceae use uh, is the rose. You can see a picture there of uh, rose farms in the Central Valley of Iowa, of, of Iowa, of California. And notice it's as flat as Iowa. It would have been easy to believe it might be Iowa. 
And uh, in the lower right, there is uh, uh, Rose Farm in India produces over 550 million stems per year. Um, they're one, the, they say they are the largest uh, rose producer in the world, and they're expanding to Ethiopia, of all places. In the first or second slide, I commented that uh, naturally there are no uh, red or blue flowers in this family. Uh, however, a mutation back in 1930, someone found a, a slightly reddish rose, and that has been selected and improved upon. So now today, it's hard to imagine that, there's, uh, that red roses aren't uh, natural. Iowa natives of the Rosaceae. Um, one of the most lovely little prairie plants out there is called prairie smoke. GM Triflorum. In the upper right is the, um, uh, the uh, finished flower, and lo the left side is the flowers uh, still in bud. They're a uh, uh, prairie species, quite short though, only a, few, only a foot tall or so. Uh, nine bark is another Iowa native that, that uh, occurs naturally and also is used in hort horticultural uh, uh, settings. Wild strawberry is native to Iowa, Frigeria. Uh, service berry is very common understory tree in uh, Iowa woodlands. Wild plums are extremely common in Iowa and grow quite uh, thickly. And additionally, our state flower is the wild rose. It hasn't been designated which uh, rose species, but we have uh, three or four growing in Iowa, and you can see that on the lower right. Non-native, unfortunately, that occurs uh, wider than we'd like in Iowa is a multiflora rose. This was sold for erosion control and to create a living fence. And uh, you'd think if uh, you know, so something already had the characteristic of spreading so densely that it would form a living fence, that somebody would have thought, you know, hey, maybe that's a bad thing. But uh, they didn't. And it was sold for years and years and years. And now is, um, they estimate 45 million acres are infested with this rose in the United States. And the large picture at the bottom, you can see the, the base of the stipule on a leaf uh, has a little fringe of hairs, uh, like a little toothbrush or eyelashes or something. And that's very diagnostic of this rose. Uh, most um, native roses or uh, other roses do not have those little fringes. So the toxicity. Uh, I mentioned already cyanogenic glucosides are produced by many rosaceous species. They're stored in the vacuoles, you know, which are the big just um, water bags in the cells, so they break very easily when they're chewed, and whether it's by animals or humans. And almost immediately, they're converted to hydrogen cyanide, which interferes with um, other enzymes in our bodies that um, have a heavy metal in them that uh, is essential to the function of that enzyme. The, the cyanide uh, ion breaks off and knocks those uh, metal ions out, and so the, the enzymes become ineffective. And so it shuts down respiration, which is obviously not good. Uh, they're worse than ruminants, whether it's because they um, chew their cud and break more of the cyanide loose, or um, if it's just their rumen is uh, somehow more sensitive. But when cattle get into uh, some members of this family, they can uh, die. Not a good thing. For more information, of course, there's Wikipedia. There is the uh, Illinois website. Uh, Purdue also has uh, a very nice um, information page on Rosaceae. And then there's a couple links there about multiflora rose. So that concludes the Rosaceae.